Well, welcome back to the channel, guys. Tonight, we are making a custom birdhouse uh, out of a at least a 15-year-old birdhouse that's been screwed to a oak tree in my backyard for about 15 years. Now, originally, this was white, and uh, I added some shingles to it. My mom had given it to me, and uh, hung it out there, and in the very first winter, uh, my dad and mom feed the squirrels and chipmunks and the squirrel population got so bad that th my dad decides in the middle of winter to play a joke and drop one off at my house. So he passes my house to get in the morning newspaper at 4.30 in the morning. He's opening his tailgate and letting a squirrel out in the middle of the winter and it has nowhere to go. It has no food supply. So it proceeds to climb up my oak tree and chew a hole, <laughs> y'all. I big showed it to you. Yes. A big, a big hole in this thing for a squirrel to fit in, and that's where it spent its winter. It even put leaves in there. It was funny. What happened to the squirrel come spring? I don't know. I wasn't following it. One day I went out, and he was gone. So the apartment was free. The there is a is, very large squirrel that we see out there, so it could be him. Well, yeah, maybe hard to say, but he completely ruined the birdhouse. No bird is going to use it. Yeah, no. Up. You know, it's big enough for a crow to use right. practically. So no bird is going to. The rat mine is going to use this huge hole in this box, and there's nothing safe about it. So this year, Gail and I decided to restore some birdhouses around the property because I would like to get some bluebirds back. Which is uh, there's another part of the story. We'll come to it a little later. But right now, we'll talk about the birdhouse. So. In order to cover up this massively chewed hole, I thought, well, I'm a clock maker. I have cuckoo clocks. Gail's going to flash a few pictures of those in here as I'm talking. And I decided let's make a cuckoo clock birdhouse. Like, that would be cool. So I have, I had Gail. She painted it for us. So you can see there's the bellows on the side, and it's just painted brown. And to get rid of this big-ass hole as squirrel chewed, I have a dial from an actual cuckoo clock that we're going to use to put right over top of that hole, just like that. And then I'm going to take and open this hole up large enough for bluebirds to come in. It's an inch and a half, right, Gail? I think yes, it, it is. is. Inch, inch and, and a half. half hole. So we're gonna cut this out, inch and a half right here. And then I've got some clockmaker stuff in my collection. Gail found us some pine cones. And now we are going to put some eyelets in the pine cones. These are just our test ones. The ones we picked, we we're just making sure it works. I got some brass chain for actual cuckoo clock chain. So the, if you can see right here, the uh, pine cone weights will be on their own chains. And we're going to put eyelets into there. And then the pendulum is a popsicle stick. And Gail found this really cool leaf that kind of looks scale to that. And we are also going to drill a small hole in that. Put an eyelet through there, and we're going to hang it like this so that the thing will actually swing. I have to drill a little hole in the back for the pin, but that should put it right about there. You can get, can get the idea of how it'll look. Things will be able to move around, so it looks kind of authentic. It's not going to be ticking, but the wind won't wrap everything around itself, and it'll look like a cuckoo clock hanging in the yard on a tree. And maybe something will, you know, build a nest in it. We're hoping bluebirds do, and if they do, we're going to continue this video because now we're going to videotape the baby bluebirds and the bluebirds using this as a nest. So whether it gets used or not, it's going to be just some a conversation piece. And I would love for bluebirds to move into it, but even if it's bluebirds that don't move into it, I hope something moves into it. Yeah, we won't know, but whatever it does, whatever moves into it, we'll keep you posted on this future birdhouse project along with maybe other ones. Gail can take you for a walk sometime around the property and show you the birdhouses we have. Sure, I'd love to do that. So, all right, well, here's what we're gonna do. When we're done with this thing, uh, when we're done putting it together, the next clip of this video, we will uh, we'll show you the finished product and take you outside and show you where we're gonna hang it and uh, have a look at it. Maybe, maybe we've inspired you to build your own. It's really easy. It is, yes. All right, welcome to part two. Part two of this video is we're gonna show you what we're doing as far as making this cuckoo clock birdhouse look authentic. So what we've got, Gail got us a box of brass eye hooks, eyelets and eye hooks, and then she collected some pine cones from at her house, and uh, we didn't know if it was gonna work or not, but we had to have something natural. So we took these little eyelets, these are called eyelet, yay? Yeah. And then in the middle of the the cone has got almost like a solid core, so I took a pair of pliers and we ran one down pretty far to the point where I could physically 
could not pull it out. So it's only gonna hang a pine cone. So that's how you make the pine cones. You just put the eyelet in there and then the chain's gonna go on here. Another one of these eyelets, we're gonna screw that into the bottom of the clock. I got a small drill bit, you're gonna make a pilot hole for this so that you can put this in the hole. So you don't have to you know, try to go through solid wood. It's impossible you have to drill a pilot hole for that. And then we're gonna make a chain to, to connect. We're gonna be hooking it on there so the wind's gonna blow these around. We don't want them to be able to, we don't want them to fly off. So what we're gonna do in a flat pair of pliers, what we're gonna do is bend the eyelet away. And then this is gonna go through there. And then we're gonna close this back up again. So that is how you're gonna fasten it to there. Brass chain, which is kind of cool. We're actually using real chain for this, but if you take the end, then you're gonna hook it through a link of the chain, just like that. Now, when the wind blows, you know, you don't want this to fly off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the larger, kind of like a miniature channel lock, as so, and you're gonna put it here, make sure it's closed all the way. Right. So let's just finish it off, just like that. Now the chain's not going nowhere. Now we'll get a pile hole drilled into there, so we got one on each end. So now it's that one for one pine cone, and I made one earlier to practice so I wouldn't like I was a fumbling fool. Just to cut the chain the length, and then that's how we're gonna put the pine cones on here. The pendulum is gonna require some serious you know, tedious attention because we are going to, this is something I don't want to mess up. This has right. to be right. Yeah. All right, so there's our hole for the pendulum. And I hope that this eyelet fits through there. I think it's going to. All the way, look at that, perfect fit, Gail. It's like you'd be putting it on a sweater. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's attached. I'll drill a hole for this guy. Let's drill that. That hooks the pendulum. So you know that one pendulum. Super. Run a bead of glue on the back of it, you know, something just to keep it from splitting. The pendulum's ready. Right. And the cones are ready. I got about centered with the screws. And then you gotta find center. That's center. Let's drill a little hole there. Put our eyelet. We'll run this little bugger in there so this that eyelet doesn't come out. How's that, Gail? Looks Super. like it's pretty good, huh? Yeah, I like that. We'll move around. Yeah. And now we gotta put the eyelets in for the crack right there where that one is. So it looks like we are at inch and three eighths. And that's approximately where we're gonna be. So we got those guys drilled. Super. This is gonna be so exciting, Gail. I know. I can't wait to see these things done. And then we have the other one. And this one's already hanging. Right. Okay, so we got that one. And we'll put our other pine cone in there. Well, the one pine cone's a little bit curved, but... That's okay. Yeah. It's called natural look. All right, so... So that's what we got so far. I'm excited. Let's move on to the next step. Now, you might think I'm that good at making a perfect circle with a Dremel, but I am not. So we're going to change this bit, something that will sand instead of chop and cut. Because this has to be taken off slowly so as to keep the circle nice. I think this will work. It should. Much more precise. See that? Mm-hmm. You don't want to boss the last part of it up. <laughs> the best part, you know? Right. Take our time, no hurry. Just take out what we need. <laughs> we'll do a quick measurement here, make sure. Gotta make that a little bit larger. God, sometimes I amaze myself with my awesomeness. <laughs> I love Dremels, <laughs> yeah, they're so cool. Uh, all right, let's make one more little adjustment here. How's it look, B? Yeah, I think we're gonna be in the game now. All Let's right. Measure it again. Yeah. It's not like we're restoring this for King George V, you know? Right. But I mentioned I love Dremels. <laughs> They're freaking awesome, those things. I wore out one. I literally just nearly wore up one to death. I guess a little piece of sandpaper will get in here. And... All right, Gail. Look at that. Super. There you go. There's your clock dial. There's our hole yep. for our bird. Yeah, bluebirds don't like to have perches. You can't put a perch on a bird bluebird house because they don't like it. They cling on to their, they cling on to it. It is right dead on the money, inch and a half. Super. And that almost, you really almost can't tell. 
Like no. it's gonna look freaking cool. It is. Oh my god, we we need to go. <laughs> we should go drop it on the on the box and see what it looks like right now. Let's All go right, do it. Let's go. All right, Keely, here we go. I'm gonna set it on here. <laughs> Wait, the dial of the clock actually covers up the old perch perfectly. Okay. Oh my god, it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Coolest birdhouse in this town, that's for sure. Totally. And that's the thing. You can buy. If you go to garage sales, you can buy old cuckoo clocks that are just beyond repair. And you can literally take a, a, a real cuckoo clock and modify it for a birdhouse. How cool you is can. that? Yeah. Because I'll tell you, cuckoo clocks are very expensive to fix. I get asked occasionally to repair cuckoo clocks. Just to even think about a cuckoo clock repair, no matter what, you're looking at around four hundred dollars. And that's, that's a lot. That's hopefully that the clock isn't damaged or wore out, and you have to make repairs. That's just taking it all apart to physically overhauling it and servicing it. Right. And if, if anybody thinks it's easy, it's not easy, especially when you get to the part where the bellows and the wires and the bird and the bird comes out and the door opens. Those are all controlled by wires on like these cogs. Right. So if you want to test out your your ability, pick apart a cuckoo clock and try from beginning to end to make it work just like brand new. And then you won't go, oh my God, $400 to fix a cuckoo clock. I remember what it's like, 150 <laughs> My mom paid 150 to fix that one in the 80s, and that woman wasn't even qualified. There it is, guys. <laughs> what do you think of that, huh? Oh, that is so cool, B. Yeah, take the bottom off and get it ready. All right. Yeah. So we got to take the bottom off because in order to hang it on the tree, you have to run the screws through the inside. Let's go put it on the tree, Gio. All right. All right, that feels pretty secure. Super. Looking at the inside, oh, it's nice and clean. It's ready to go. I did clean it out really good. Yeah, it's great. Now we put the bottom on. That hole should line up. Oh, okay, Gail, look at that, huh? <laughs> oh my God, this is so cool. Oh, it's adorable. Okay. Now we'll turn the pendulum so it looks right. Isn't that something else, Gail? It's so cool. Oh my God, that's exactly what we wanted, right? Yeah. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around and watching my video. If you enjoyed it, do me a big favor and hit that subscribe button down there for me so you get to see a whole lot more. Thanks guys. Bye.